إذا بابك انسد حبيبي علي أحلفك يا أبو ليم خاطر رقية أريد بخدمتك أظل البنية أضيع Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the late night talk with me, your host Ahmed Ali. And uh, before we do begin any episode, um, I would like to send my uh, condolences to Imam Sahib al-Asr wa zaman may Allah hasten his reappearance uh, to you, my dear viewers, and to everyone across the world uh, on the tragic nights of Muharram. I know a few nights ago, my dear guest Sayyid Abbas Panju and I began the month of Muharram with uh, Sheikh Abbas Panju. We apologize for that. Sheikh Abbas Panju. Uh, we kicked off the month of Muharram with the banner exchange ceremony and uh, we mentioned a lot of things uh, you can check that out, uh, out on YouTube. Uh, but as we move closer to the 10th of Muharram, uh, the sorrows within our hearts increase. If you find yourself depressed in these nights, don't wonder why, because the hearts of the daughters of the Prophet Muhammad were also depressed these nights. The hearts of the brave warriors of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Abu al-Fadl Abbas, the moon of Bani Hashim. I have a beautiful view behind me right now. Uh, you know, I'm sitting right between the two minarets and, and the dome uh, is on my left. Uh, so it's, it's, it's beautiful uh, to see how uh, Karbala, after 1400 years, uh, has grown. And Imam Hussein right there on my right, uh, beautiful shots. Uh, we do uh, give a uh, a warm shout out to our uh, crew members, uh, cameramen and uh, the people uh, inside the studio and uh, inside the control room. But tonight, inshallah, is the third night. And uh, what's really heartbreaking and sad at the same time uh, for the third night of Muharram, uh, it's interesting. Because wherever you go across you know, the globe, uh, you'll find Shias in different countries commemorating or remembering someone different although they have one thing in common if you go to Persian if you go to uh, Iran uh, the Persian uh, countries uh, you'll find them commemorating Ruqayya if you go to the if you go to India Pakistan and the Indo-Pak communities you'll find them commemorating Sakina and if you come to Iraq, you'll find them commemorating Fatima al-Alila, the Arabs commemorating Fatima al-Alila. Now what's all in common is these three individuals are the daughters of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Yet two were present on the day of Ashura and one was left alone in Medina, left back due to her illness, Fatima al-Alila. And now we'll get to talk about, uh, talk about uh, why did Imam Hussain alayhi salam uh, leave his daughter and uh, you know honestly it's one of the most heartbreaking stories uh, to ever uh, think about to ever read uh, and to ever you know touch upon in general because a four-year-old who cannot bear to leave her father and you know she's so attached to her father that every night she gets him the uh, prayer rug and she uh, spreads it for him to come and pray. Uh, we'll get to talk about more of what, what she did and how Al Hussein's heart was broken uh, when uh, this beautiful small child of Al Hussein alayhi salam, uh, was left behind. Now, a lot of people wonder uh, where, wherever you go, uh, this question is always raised uh, to us Shia as to why did Imam Hussain alayhi salam take his sisters, his wives, uh, and his daughters to fight. Now the intention of Imam Hussain alayhi salam leaving Medina was not to fight. You can go look through history. I mean, uh, I remember a couple years back uh, when uh, 
I had the honor of uh, sitting with a, with, with a few scholars, and this question was also raised as to why did Hassan leave from Medina with his family members? Okay, he didn't want to pledge allegiance. Okay, the tyrant was corrupt. Okay, but why did he take his children? He could have left them just like he left Fatima, and 100% acceptable. You know, why go and sacrifice your daughters, your wives, your, 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 your small sons, you know, you, basically your whole family? Why would you do that? Now the intention, and then the scholar gave a very beautiful answer to that. He says, was his intention to fight? And the person said, I don't know. The, the intention of Imam Hassan Ali was not to fight. He did not leave Medina to fight. He said it explicitly. I did not leave when I left seeking reformation for the religion of my grandfather, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. What was happening at that time that Imam Hussein wanted to you know, seek reformation and by, by taking his wife, his, his wives, his daughters, his sisters, his nephews, Everyone in his, in his family and his companions came with him to Karbala. Seeking reformation, you know, to Ahlul Bayt, this is, you know, with a movement of the finger, they can change this world. But Imam Hussein alayhi salam wanted to give that image of when you look at a certain person, you'll know what tragedies they've been through and to learn from them. So who did he take? He took Zainab. Who else did he take? He took Sakina, Layla, Rabab. All the individuals who if we study today, and unfortunately we haven't studied today, the only season we actually look at the lives of uh, the family of Imam al Hussein, Ahl al-Bayt in general, but specifically the family of Imam al Hussein is Ashura, is Muharram. And it's unfortunate. Why? Because honestly, if we were to study those lives, we would find so many lessons. So many lessons. One of the lessons that uh, Zainab salam teaches us uh, through her stand before, before even Ashura, uh, Imam Hussein alayhi salam gathered all of his companions uh, and you know, he narrated what will happen. He says, you know what? Zainab already knows because Fatim the Zahra alayhi salam, peace and blessings be upon her, uh, gave her um, a shirt, uh, a ripped shirt, an old shirt, uh, to give to her brother. So on the day of Ashura, they wouldn't have to, you know, they wouldn't leave the body of Nur Hassan alayhi salam, you know, unclothed or, you know, uncovered. So they wouldn't take the shirt. And that's the exact same shirt that Imam Sadiq alayhi salam refers to when he says Muharram, if, if the moon of Muharram or the crescent of Muharram is shown the angels of the heavens spread the shirt of Imam Hussein alayhi salam over the entire universe and there is no stone that doesn't cry and there is no sky that doesn't weep over Imam Hussein alayhi salam so let us be among the skies Weeping Imam Hussain alayhi salam and lamenting on Hussain. So one of the stands of Zainab, peace and blessings be upon her. When Hussain said everything, Zainab already knew. But there was a stand she had to make. There was something that she had to say in front of everyone to make them realize that the action that you're doing right now is a hundred percent pure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, as I mentioned, he was not leaving for war. He, he mentioned this later on when his troops were, you know, in thousands. And subhanAllah, on the day of Ashura, we get 72. However, so now Hassan alayhi salam gathers everyone, his companions, and he says to them, O oh, Fulan, O oh, Fulan, O oh, Zainab, O oh, Rabab, you know, everyone, we're going to a journey or on a journey that will end in a couple of days. You know, I, I, I will be beheaded, 
My family will be taken as captives. Now Zainab السلام, says to Imam al Hussein, uh, she says to him, Oh brother, if this will happen to you, who will be there to narrate your story and spread Islam? So she insisted on coming with Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the rest of the women and children insisted as well. You know, if we, if we were to look at a similar situation, uh, we would look at the story of Mubahala. Because honestly, one of the most impressing stories uh, that someone would look at through the history of Islam is uh, the story of Mubahala. And uh, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa brought his close family members in a social war, if you will, you know, and because he said, whoever is lying, Allah's curses will, you know, or Allah's damnations will come upon him. So he brought his family members to show that how pure these individuals were. The same as Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Prophet Muhammad could have taken anyone because Islam at that time was, was, was pretty big. You know, he had, he had a few thousand followers. He could have taken them. You know, tens of companions. He could have taken them. But no, he chose his family. This is why Imam Hussain alayhi salam chose the really close ones. Thousands left with him. But the chosen ones, 72 or so, give and take by the narrations, stayed with Imam Hussain alayhi salam. So Zainab alayhi salam says to Imam Hussain, peace and blessings be upon him, who will be there to spread your message? And honestly, one of the most beautiful stories that ever you know, narrated in Islam is the story of Ashura. You know, after we hear scholars, uh, you know, uh, uh, recent scholars or uh, past scholars saying the narration or saying the, the, the quote, of, you know, yes, the mission of Imam Hussain alayhi salam was to actually, you know, uh, sacrifice himself for Islam. And, but the legacy of Imam al Hussain continued through Zainab. Because right now, we do hear the maqatil mentioning, you know, uh, incidents happening from the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. But the most tragic ones are what happened after Ashura to the family of Imam Hussain alayhi salam to Zainab, to Umm Kulthum, and to the others. This is what really st strikes the heart of, you know, of, 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 our, of you know, our hearts and the hearts of millions across the world that every year we come, we sit, we gather every night for 13 nights. Some people go all the way to Arba'een every night commemorating each night what happened uh, where did they go? And it's actually beautiful to sit every night uh, and talk about this because the journey from Karbala to Sham and back to Karbala is one that's beautiful, tragic at the same time, and heartbreaking because you get to realize, you know, the far distances that Ahl al Bayt traveled just for me and you, for me to sit in front of the camera and say this, and for you to sit at home and watch on your TVs. They gave so much for Islam. They gave so much for the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to spread, to continue. Yet, we sit at the comfort of our homes. And I'm talking about myself first. I'm not talking about people that I know. We sit at the comfort of our homes so fortunate, you know, and, and you know, not even thinking about the, the rest of the year, what Ahl al-Bayt had to go through. Because according to narrations, Arba'een was the Arba'een after, like the next year Arba'een. That's one narration. But even for 40 days, going from one city to the other, and then to the other, humiliated. Why? Because Zainab alayhi salam made that stand before Ashura, before even Muharram approached. She said, oh brother, if this is going to happen to you, if your companions are going to die, they're going to be butchered, if you're going to be killed, who's going to be there to tell your story? Which Zainab alayhi salam did perfectly in Kufa, did perfectly on the way to Sham and in Sham. 
But if we want to go a bit, just a few days back before Zainab said this, what happened on those nights? You know, as, as I began uh, today's episode, we talked about every night is dedicated to someone different from the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. When you reach from the fifth up until the tenth, you have Muslim earlier, you have different individuals according to different cultures. But when you go from the 5th or the 6th of Muharram up until the 10th, almost everybody commemorates the same individuals. We have on the 5th we have the Ansar, on the 6th, sorry, on the 5th we have Muslim, on the 6th we have the Ansar, on the 7th we have Abul Fadl Abbas uh, you know, the, the, the beautiful uh, warrior, the brave warrior uh, behind me right now is shrine. Uh, you have on the 8th Al Qasim, on the 9th Ali Al Akbar, Laylatul Ashr, the night of the 10th, you have Ali Al Asghar, the, the sixth month old baby, and then the 10th you have Muhsan Ali Salam. All of them died on the day of Ashra except for Muslim, he died earlier. But all of them died on the day of Ashra. But for the first 10 days, you have different people or dedicated for different days, or different days dedicated for different people. Now, on the third, it's very special. On the third, it's dedicated to the daughter of Muhammad Hussain Whether you're living in the east or you're living in the west, you're commemorating the daughter of Imam Hussain Whether it's Sakina, whether it's Ruqayya, and whether it's Fatima Al-Alila. What makes them all in common is that all of them were the beautiful daughters of Imam Hussain And if you go look at Ruqayya, well, she had a miserable life after Ashura. She had a life that you know any child cannot bear. If you were to go back and look at Fatima al Alila, when Imam Hussain alayhi salam, before he left, he said, Tonight, whoever name I call out, you'll be joining me in my journey. Now, he gathered everyone and started calling out names. Almost everybody that was present in that room from the family of Muhammad alayhi salam, left with him, except for Umm al-Baneen and Fatima al-Alila. So, Imam Hussain alayhi salam leaves, goes to his room. Everyone's getting ready to leave in the morning. Imam Hussain feels someone coming to the room, going back three times, coming to the room, standing there. You know, he was praying, but he can feel someone coming to the room, going back, coming to the room and going back. And all of a sudden, he turns back and he sees a small girl leaving. Now he calls over Zainab, he says, Zainab, let's go to my daughter Fatima. I, I, I think she wants to speak to me. You know, she has something to say. So she, Mama Hussein and Zainab السلام, go to uh, Fatima Al-Alila. And they tell her, you know, do you have something to say to your father? She says, oh father, I feel like I'm not a part of this house. I'm not a member of this house. Imam Hussain began to tear up. He says, oh my daughter, what are you talking about? She says, you called everyone tonight that will leave with you. But you did not call my name. Now earlier, Imam Hussain told Zainab, if anything happens, you know, Fatima should stay back because if she sees what will happen to me, she loves me so much that she will die instantly. So Imam Hussain alayhi salam told Zainab. So they're talking to Fatima and Imam Hussain says, Oh my beloved daughter, it's nothing of what you say. You're a part, you're much part of the family as anyone else. So the most sad sta- the, the, the most sad story is the narration that Fatima Ali says to her father, she says, Oh dad. I can mount the saddle. If the night comes, I can get you ready to sleep. If it's time for prayer, I can you know, get your stuff ready for prayer. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll be like your servant, just take me with you. She was begging her dad, her father, you know, Hussain, to take her with him. But yet he says, oh Fatima, you, know, you have to stay back, you're ill. You know, and what breaks the heart is after they come back and you know, when the tragedy has all happened and Umm al is, you know, it's, it's, it's a crazy story. But what 
keep you tuned in every night of what happened on these certain nights and who these nights are commemorated to or affiliated to. And inshallah, we'll be back after this short break with a very special guest uh, from the UK, uh, a poet and dear friend of mine. So uh, to the break and we'll be back shortly. So do stay tuned. يا شهر عاشور هيا جت الحزن يا ابا عبد الله يا ابو اليمة والجماهير اسمح لصخرة الفاسدين شعبنا دار يا ابن الدار انا بك جسم حسين ضار وبلا دفن حسين خان على الجامع يجري على الوجين وين فجاعة بدين النبي سيدي يا شهر هل النص هل النص رحم الله عليك بارك الله فيك يا شهر عاشور بيك الشمس ضاع أبيك ضاع وبلا دفن فوق التراب يا شهر عاشور حرب أولى المطناب أب بيك زين المصطفى داميلنا حق يا شهر عباس خسف وهامته يا شهر عباس خسف وهامته وبيك ابو فاضل انقطع كنت ويلسهم صابو وشعب جوجير بيت كل يوم بكربلاء ما ينسى ذكر الحسين الى اخر نفس من اهالي كربلاء يا شهر عاشور بي يا شهر عاشور وانصار الشهيد يا شهر عاشور وانصار الشهيد ادبيك كلها تشتلت فوق الصعيد وليت انا تشتفت من ايد ليد عوق باب السجاد ويل سبعه وعشر الى المرحوم ياسين الكوفي يا شهر ladies and gentlemen welcome back you know it's the beautiful scenes uh, as uh, the CG says or as the caption says 
uh, street walk in paradise and really it is paradise when you see these processions when you see everyone just coming out on the nights of Muharram every single night and I, you know I encourage everyone to actually come and uh, look at what happens in Karbala document you know in, in your journeys uh, in, in, in your journal sorry or in your diaries and you know just just every day what you see in Karbala because every night you'll see something different because a different procession has something bigger than the other processions like a competition uh, you know whoever has uh, the biggest lights and stuff because they try to show that these nights are so sad for the Ahl Bayt السلام, that the only way to light up these nights you know and to remember Ahl Bayt السلام, is through the lights and you know through the uh, stuff that goes around you know I, I seen a beautiful uh, you know I think it's a flower crown that goes around uh, Bayn Haramain inside the shrines uh, it's, it's been there for ages uh, that people are commemorating this in, in uh, you know and and the beautiful culture uh, of different uh, you know races and everyone just comes to Karbala uh, to commemorate one occasion and that's the occasion of Al Bayt Ali Muslim and Imam Hussein. We do have uh, our uh, brother from the UK, Sajjad Al Adin. Salamun alaikum, Alina. Salamun alaikum, Sajjad. Alaikum salam. How are you, brother? How are you? Alhamdulillah. How are you? Allah salamkum, Allah khalikum, inshaAllah. Now we did have you as uh, our uh, guest. Uh, in the martyrdom of Ma'ar ibn Talib in Ramadan and we do have you once again uh, in our show Late Night Talk uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful uh, view behind me right now uh, we have uh, you know people from across the world coming to Karbala uh, to commemorate these nights uh, so before we get into uh, poetry and before we get into uh, the sad occasions uh, or the sad uh, moments that you have prepared for us um, how are you guys Commemorating Ashura in the UK. Uh, yeah, um, as as always, as every year, we have um, a lot of centres here that um, have majalis and have remembrance of Hussein Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's quite it's quite quite an intense atmosphere at the moment. Uh, um, you know, there's an atmosphere of sorrow and sadness of the yes. Muharram as always. Um, and alhamdulillah, we're able to commemorate the tragedy of Imam Hussein as we do every year. Yeah, I mean, when Ashura arrives, do you feel uh, the sense of, of depression, the, the the sense of sadness going into you? Because you know, it, it does fall into you know a random uh, in, in in the half of the of, of, of a random month. So you know, you get that feeling of sadness. Do you also get that feeling, or is that just you know just a random feeling that anyone feels? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, the line is not very clear, so I can't hear everything you're saying. But I think I get the gist of it, and and the you know the sense of s sadness and sorrow is is always going to be um, in the air. And I think um, the majority of us uh, commemorating Ashura in yeah. uh, in a country other than the Holy Land of Karbala wish we could be there in Karbala. So inshallah, inshallah next year, uh, everyone who wants to to be there, inshallah, will be able to. Had the tawfiq to be in Karbala next year. Inshallah, inshallah. Because honestly, uh, when you do come to Karbala, you'll you'll, you'll get that vibe. I know uh, you've made it to Karbala a few times, and, and you know it's honestly it's it's a beautiful vibe. I mean, how many times have you been to Karbala? Can you tell us? Yeah, I've been maybe three times uh, to Karbala, but you know I've been to for Arba'in and and you know other other dates such as that, but never for uh, Ashura, the first ten days of Muharram. So inshallah, mm -hmm. next year. Uh, with your du'as inshallah hopefully yep. hopefully inshallah you can come uh, during muharram because honestly uh, living here in karbala uh, is is a blessing you see everyone just uh, you know just energetic to serve on hussein alayhi salam you know I, I i can hear the mawakib behind me the you know uh, the cups for teas you know you know hitting each other you can hear them from right here uh, it's it's beautiful uh, but habibi sajad yeah. what have you prepared for us tonight sorry what have you prepared for us tonight? And uh... I have a I have a poem uh, on the sons of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Um, it's entitled "How Many Sons Die on Ashura." So it's, oh, wow. it's you know it's about the sons of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the you know the nephews of Imam Hussein alayhi salam who wow. fought on the day of Ashura. Beautiful, beautiful thoughts. I mean, can you can you share that with us? I said, Inshallah, start with the Salawat ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Ya Allah. Abbas and Hussein watched their sister, the children of Zainab thirsty, 
with their dry tongues to Hussein they come together will destroy the army a proud Zainab Hussein broken Abbas's hands embrace all three and in armor of their grandfather they ride into the battlefield young boys against the strongest men men reminded of Ali then and Zainab's calls are not for her sons but for her mother's son Hussein how many sons die on Ashura a parched tongue seen in a dry mouth. In checking his own, Hussein weeps. With no tears and no voice, he weeps as blood from the heart of Akbar seeps, and this land of and this desert land of heartache becomes a land of mountains steep. How is Hussein returned back, carrying his son on a spear? The mother of one Ali falls as the mother of Hussein calls. Someone take from him this body and protect my son Hussein. How many sons die on Ashura? A baby wrapped in Hussein's arms. No army left and left unfed. How did Hussein carry him out and walk along the path he'd bled? Cries ringing in his voice, he cried, O oh father, and his son he lifted. Ali al Asghar was exposed. Listen, the sunlight on his forehead. He saw the arrow and said a prayer, fluttered his hands in the dry air. Was there another moment as painful for the son, Hussein? How many sons die on Ashura? The sweetness of Qasim's words ring and the heart of Hussein they sting. I can offer you no water, but the reply, I want nothing. I can hear death surrounding me and I see my father calling. I see your mother and her tears and awaiting Abbas his wings. Death for me sweeter than honey to meet my father and to meet Ali and collects the trampled pieces of Qasim the son Hussein. How many sons die on Ashura? Resting on a bed of roses. Resting on a bed of roses, no one comes here, no one comes near or opposes. Anyone who dares to approach, Hussein, a winner discloses a knife one man wants to brandish to murder, to murder the son he poses, a raised hand. How many hearts break, wails heard from Noah and Moses. The father of Yusuf is torn, he searches for his son's shirt torn as the thorns begin to cut the body of the son Hussein. How many sons die on Ashura? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Uh, you know, it's, it's beautiful how you mentioned how many sons die on Ashura. And, uh, you know, basically to answer that question, the sons of Ahlul Bayt are butchered on Ashura. You know, but uh, what's also tragic is what happens after Ashura to the daughters of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. You know, yes, the sons were killed on Ashura, but the daughters of Ahlul Bayt, it's, it's just tragic what happens to them. Uh, you know, so yeah, I would... That, you're, I, I you're absolutely ask, right. And that's, a, that's another tragedy in itself, which uh, requires another separate poem. It uh, does, it does. Can, inshallah. And come back, inshallah, on another day. Inshallah, inshallah. And, and very beautifully, we thank you very much. And we hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, you know, give you the uh, ability uh, and uh, the strength and the courage uh, to continue serving Ahlul Bayt alayhim uh, And uh, another, you know, tonight uh, is uh, something very beautiful. I, I was talking about it earlier. Uh, according to different cultures, uh, this night is dedicated to someone different. Uh, for us, you know, the, the mm -hmm. Arabic culture, uh, it's for uh, Fatima and Alila. Uh, for the indo pak mm, communities, correct. it's for uh, Sakina Uruqayya and the Persians for uh, Uruqayya. Now, how do you connect with these individuals, Ruqayya, Sakina, and Fatima al Alila? Good question. I think that um, for a lot of us, um, uh, maybe similar to me, uh, you know, um, men, older men, younger men, uh, youth, who, or even older women, yeah. um, we, we find it difficult sometimes to connect to certain personalities yes. uh, who we remember uh, tragedy of Karbala. But I think something like uh, a young a young girl, a daughter of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, either Fatima Alila who uh, was left behind or someone like Ruqayya or Sakina, 
Allah uh, who who were brought with Imam Al Hasan Al to Karbala. Yeah. Uh, we can always um, relate to them in the sense that we all know, you know, and girl, we all know, we all have a niece or a, you know, a daughter or even someone that we know, a friend's daughter, you know, a young girl that uh, we've known in in our life, um, and we can. You know, by thinking about them, we can relate to the daughters of Hassan yes. and remember their tragedy and pain and what yes. they went through as well. Inshallah. Yes, inshallah, inshallah. And honestly, if if uh, if for the ones who are married and and have kids, uh, you know that first child, uh, or you know, uh, forget about the first child, but any child that comes into their life, it's so precious to them. Yet we find Imam Al Hussein even that most precious thing was taken away from them. It was taken away from him and 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 Ahlul Bayt uh, I would like to thank you very much for joining us tonight, and hopefully we can have you in the upcoming nights, inshallah. Uh, you know, we, we have so come thank, to the thank end. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much once again. Uh, respected viewers, thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight. Hopefully, inshallah, tomorrow uh, we can touch upon a different idea and a different perspective of Ashura, a different perspective of Muharram and how this month can revolutionize our mentalities and change our you know, perspective on life and perspective on humanity in general. Once again, thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. طاني رفع حب ابو ليمه انا اختصر كل عمر بالله دخر قابل دخر قابل